happy. I'm just... How do you win this if they just stay spread and you, you can't get the assassins onto key targets? Then you add a Zac onto that, a second massive tank. You need some sort of shred now, and all that's coming to mind to try and get rid of that is... Do you know what? Just throw a Varus top lane and just fully send it. Or Silas, that's... Silas is going to be the hover. There is a lot of... Well, I was going to say there's a lot of melee champs, but in, in the end, there really isn't. There's three range on Gentle Hearts, but there's some ultimates that a Silas can take away, like the Requiem and the Death Charge, even the Let's Bounce here. Gwen is something that was played a lot by Puho in solo queue that I saw, and so it's a comfort pick for him. Going to go up against the Zac, which is a tank champion that Gwen does excel into those champs, although Zac has... I don't know. I don't normally see the Gwen versus Zach. You normally see the Gwen v the Orn or the Cassante, and Gwen has lots Aatrox. of success in those lanes. Aatrox as well, but the Zach is something we've, or at least I've yet to get more of a an understanding on. But yeah, it's it's a zero tank, zero frontline, full scrap comp here from Seed Thirty Two. So again. The Kha'Zix is going to have to try and shut down this Karthus early on. They're going to have to try and find some advantage in the bot lane, although it's going to be hard running into that CC of the Nautilus here. I'm interested to see what they can do, where they want to focus and get their advantages, because if they don't get any advantages, I feel with this well-oiled composition, the, the Jinx and the Tristana, the late game carries the Karthus, who's going to press R and chunk everyone at the very least a quarter of their HP off rip and can just suicide and bites and still do his job. It just seems really good for Gentle Hearts here. So I think the pressure is on C32 to make some plays happen in this game. It's just, where is that going to be? Yeah, I'm thinking that Kha'Zix is going to have to stick around this bot lane. I think that's the only real place we're going to see a lot of action. I think that mid lane is just too locked down, which is kind of having that extra mobility with the jump. I'm cautiously optimistic that PCL will have a decent lane against the Gwen. And Cartus is just looking to power farm, so we're, I'm expecting a very quiet early game. Unless Kha'Zix can access very, very niche gank paths and kind of step away from all wards, because they should be warding up a little bit deeper for this Kha'Zix over walls and trying to get that vision down to make sure they know where Kha'Zix is at all times. This game is just filled with spice, and we could talk about this draft forever, but we will lose our voice before we even get in. So me and Faris are going to take a very quick break to try to break this down in our minds, and we'll be back just as the game starts, so please don't go anywhere. Mike's out. That's a good job. That is hey, the bro. weirdest comp I've ever seen. Dude, it's so insane, like... I don't know. The Pike pick, I thought maybe like, like okay, brand support or something with Ezreal. Uh, but dude, Pike and then they lock in the Nautilus. I feel like it's just too easy. I, I guess I'm just not giving these players the credit they deserve. They're all really good. But like if I saw, if I was playing like the Jinx, for example, because I play AD carry, like I'm playing Jinx and I see their team and I'm like, dude, this is a free win. Like they, all we need to do is get past like 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then like I get one item and I'm chilling. We just 5v5 and win. So I, I don't know. They, they're they going to have to pull off some crazy strats here to like actually get something. I think the, the, maybe the jungle too, on top of it, attack the Karthus with the Kha'Zix, invade him, something like that. Maybe get bot priority. I, I have no idea. I don't know. It's, it's tough. I think this game is <laughs> all in the air, to be honest. It's, um, it literally comes down to how much you can protect that Jinx in a team fight. And that's not a very fun game state either. It's it's so much weight to have on an AD carry. And we saw Hope yesterday kind of get caught out a few times. There is um, Shao Danny still, though, on the Trist. So it's like there's two carries you have to worry about. There is, but it's I think Shao Danny's going to have a tough time regardless because Bran can just be... Because his stun is forward-facing, he just has an easy time if... Tris decides to jump in. She either has to burn the flash to dodge it, or he has to be decent. I may have to remember the level that everyone is at. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I just feel if the brand is good enough, Tristana will be neutralized for the early to mid. And then the late game, because of the way they play as a team and they like to kind of bunch up, they could also be in trouble. It's very, very, <clears throat> very tough. 
Yeah, and I also think it, it'll come down to how good of an engage Gentle Hearts can get, too. They have Zac, they have Nautilus. These two champs go in. They don't really peel as well, or at least they're more effective at engage than peel. So I think if they can get, like, a good Zac engage or, like, a quick Nautilus hook to find a pick, then they can roll over a fight as fast as they can. And then maybe if yeah. it the fight becomes more elongated and then Jinx doesn't have a reset and like Ezreal's just hitting from range and stuff. Pike finds like a, with his stealth, like a, an, an execute and on the back line of someone who's low, like Kha'Zix like lurking around in the, like in the brush. Perfect scenarios too. for them though. Like you can draft a comp that has the perfect scenarios. Like, oh, we'll play Camille, Galio, um, Jarvan, Jinx. It doesn't matter what sport is, and it's like, oh, you can engage, and then Galio will go in, and we'll lock them down, and then we'll use the jar of and drop the jinx. But they might never group. They might never be put in that position. So you have to think of a draft, not in the how does it work. It's just like what is the worst possible play that will still work. Yeah. What's the what's the lowest percent play? Because true. no team is perfect. Like G two twenty nineteen was the greatest example of that. Is that they played like Pike top. And everyone was like, what are you doing? But they played low percent perfectly, and that was their style. And it's a style that's hard to recreate because you just need to fully trust your teammates at all times, which you don't see anymore. Um, there's always doubt. Like, look at Kana right now for um, Carmine. Like, he's doing the correct thing. His team is not, and it's hurting him and how people view him as a player when genuinely he's doing the right thing bit tough so their low percent plays could be decent maybe yeah. okay we are one minute to live what's the what's the actual game timer looking like we are also yeah, they match up perfectly i'm actually really proud of this that's crazy damn that's a good guess So you'll probably have like a little bit of loading screen to waffle through, but yeah, just send it when we get into game. Just leave it on the zero zero. Gentle hearts is used to it. Oh, don't. There'll be a teacher out there that hates me for doing that. I'll get beaten in a tap. Is yes, I do I do production as a degree. I will get absolutely no. berated for leaving a timer on zero. Oh, I guess it depends on your uh, your style, I suppose. Like I've always put timers with the uh, um, what's it called in the background? The um, will be two seconds or whatever. I want to put down on it. Like um, I'll say that they were prepped and ready. We're just waiting for something, like a little disclaimer. That, that's my style, I suppose. Because I know everything is going to be delayed because I know the people I'm working with are useless. Well, then. Because all teams Game. are just the worst. Absolutely. Game is ready. Are you? Right. No, I'm yep. ready. We'll take well, a second. Let's get it. Let's do it. Five, four, three, two, one. Mike's live. We are here with game number one. You can see Faker's little shrouded face in front of the Nexus right there. It's going to fade away soon once those gates open up. And we are here for game one between Gentle Hearts or... Actually, this is not a best of series. This is the only game. Game one, only game between these two teams. And they are both one and one here in the switch stage of the North American Challengers online qualifier. And Gentle Hearts, yeah, they're both sitting at one and one both Gentle Hearts and Seed32. If you're just joining us, our caster desk today is myself and Ferris and Seder on the color cast. And let's look at the elephant in the room that we're looking at right here. It's tenfold on the Ezreal in the mid lane with that teleport in those summoner spells. Yeah, that is for sure a strange one. Um, I didn't expect to see the Ezreal in the mid lane, especially with the TP as well. And Fright is going towards that bot side. I was talking about that brand ADC, and I thought it was a very interesting pick and can be quite strong, but I didn't expect to see it. When you also have an Ezreal, I really expect that go bot side, but let's see how they uh, to play this one out. They could maybe pick up an advantage bot side and swap that Ezreal back, but getting that extra XP onto Ezreal, not a bad thing either. And I think this is something that was played in LCS today. I didn't watch... 
uh, a lot of the games at all. I was just popping my head in back and forth, or maybe it was yesterday. But I do think Ezreal mid was played into the Tristana mid. And this is something that I think people across the league are sort of recognizing as maybe a potential Tristana counter is how do you counter this Tristana who's been running the mid lane for a couple of patches? Well, let's put another AD carry up against her as we see heavy trading in the top side and we'll see how well this Ezreal mid does actually work out and how well the brand bot will do against the Jinx who has the barrier to stay alive a little bit easier in the bot lane and we're trying to get hope to that late game power. Same thing with Xiao Danny and, and be able to win that way. But as this game begins, junglers are starting on opposite sides of the map and PCL taking a heavy trade here. Getting that early prio on Evan DB, we'll see how the game and the map starts to develop. Yeah, that's exactly what you want to see from your Zacto, getting that early pressure immediately. We do see Kazix working from the bot to top. And we will see that information also going over to them as they will pick up a nice and easy Cartus clear timing. Kha'Zix knows that that top side is now gankable and PCL does have a warden that try, but they can get over that wrap or over the Baron wall and get into that river. There's a chance that PCL could be caught out. Has passive available. We always have to remember that as well. But yeah, it's... It's opening up well enough now. We have some decent pressure in the top. We have Cartus super speed clearing everything possible. Bot lane looking comfortable so far. Nothing too crazy happening. And a very heavy Clyde. trade coming through. And Clyde is getting chunked. Clyde took half his HP. So a bit of a trade in the bot side. And it goes the way of both Fright and Freemason. And again, Windcrafty in a much slower clear here than this Karthus. And so Cross is going to get back onto the map with the Amp Tome and the Mana Crystal in his inventory before this Kha'Zix can reset. But let's look down over at the bot side. Free Mason now locked up here. Does have access to the Flash and does have to use it to survive. And so this Pike is having trouble getting the early aggression off here three and a half minutes into the game. And now PCL jumping onto Windcrafty who uses a jump of his own to close the gap and get away. And it's going to be Gentle Hearts to secure that top scuttle. Yeah, they do get that top scuttle. They get a lot more for the characters. We do see the pings coming down already that Wind Crafting does want to work towards that bottom scuttle. And uh, we do see Cartus deciding not to go down towards it, was thinking about it, was going to try and contest it, but no, we'll walk back towards this top. We'll notice that Gromp has not spawned yet. She'll be spawning soon and the timing should be there for it, but that will be a scuttle trade overall. Not terrible, but there is still a lot more to be done in this game for them to pick up advantages in Pike. It looks like they want to be the difference maker. Now, Free Mason is thinking about maybe getting involved in this mid lane, channeling the recall, waiting for an opportunity to present itself. And it's actually Shao Danny very pushed up here, but Free Mason doesn't think the opportunity is there. Going to head back down to the bot lane. This Tristana has the priority for the moment over the Ezreal. Actually, Tenfold still yet to use that teleport, but Freemason finding another angle going to go into stealth, and Shao Danny says, oh damn, there is a pike nearby, gonna dodge away from the bone skewer, holding onto the rocket jump, but now uses it, and gets out of that one nice and clean, and so, also, Frightening moving up to the mid lane too, and Shao Danny holds his ground. Yeah, Shao Danny holds his ground, doesn't burn the flash, more importantly, that's the one you always gotta watch out for. That flash disappears, there's a lot more that can be done in that mid lane, but both junglers no impact so far they're taking their time with it that drake has spawned we will see those grublings arrive pretty soon as well and that's when we start to see the map open up a little bit more and those plays have to be made in terms of who wants to get that early kind of objective train going once you get one or two drakes you really start to feel like that could be a free win condition and that's what mostly league is about unlocking win conditions for your team and junglers they have the hardest role of them all which objectives do you go for which ganks do you go for and who are you playing for and for the moment, I mean, there's lots of options here for Gentle Hearts. They got the Jinx there. They got Shao Danny, who's shown us what he can do when he is online with this Tristana cross. Now started up the Mountain Drake, hoping Clyde here to assist him. And they have full priority of this river. No one is nearby. Windcrafty and on the opposite side of the map, clearing away the Krugs. And so this will go the way of Gentle Hearts. Now the question is, Drew Shop Barrage goes by. There is no steal to be had. But wait a second. Clyde has been hit with the Bone Skewer. Going to use a dredge line for himself. Pop the shield. It's Fright trying to deal as much damage as he can in free. Mason does not have the flash to get away from this one. The Ignite will tick and the Jinx will get excited, but that will be the end of the play. First Blood goes away of Gentle Hearts and Clyde. 
Yeah, they do get first blood. They do get that Drake. We will see those Grubs obviously head over to the other side, but that's amazing work for them to get that first blood. It does go over to Nautilus, which isn't always the greatest result when you want that first blood going over to a carry, but for now, they'll take it, and it's, it's, a, it's a good pickup to start this game off. Definitely something they're going to be happy about. And look at the bot lane right now. Jinx has a roughly 20 CS advantage over this brand who is going to clear away this wave for the moment. So that will get smaller. Although what's going on here? Clyde uses the dredge line. They're going to go ego for this. The barrier's been popped, but free Mason picks up that kill and Clyde's going to flash away from the stun. They went for the 2v2, but they got punished for it. Balls of Steel Seed 32's bot lane will even up the game score. Yeah, they'll even it up. That's oh, that's no. a big miss from them there. And will we see some? Yeah, we'll see the characters old come out, and it will take down fright. So, oh my not goodness, all is a lost. solo kill <laughs> potentially happening. Evan DB's gone. PCL showing up to play for Gentle Hearts. Yeah, and it's just the dominoes keep falling there as they get the kill onto the characters, the assist for Jinx, and then a solo kill in the top lane. It's all working out for them. We do see a win crafty and does finish off those grubs, but. Overall, Gentle Hearts Gaming, they, they have to be happy with that. Cross maps all over and like extra assist for Karthus. Yeah, Karthus is loving life at the moment, has that kill. You didn't have to gank any lanes for it. You didn't have to move yourself to those lanes. It's so much work. Can't I just press R? You guys leave a 1 HP member here for me to collect. That's exactly what Gentle Hearts does. This Karthus so far, you know, eight minutes into the game for a jungler swimming in gold. Got that 64 CS. It's looking pretty good. Now we see level six is in the bot side. Fright, Hope, and Clyde all have access to those ultimates and Freemason, the last one waiting to level up to level six. We do see a bonus uh -oh. grenade onto Hope who does have flash, but no barrier to save himself here he's taking down he's burning and the jinx will burn up underneath his own tower now free mason wants to finish the job onto clyde but runs into a hook and cross jumping out of that bush and is going to get out of town but seed 32 once again in the bot lane are successful they are successful to get the kill onto the jinx and that's a zero two jinx they have completed those berserker greaves which i think we can all agree is the perfect start for jinx as they just want the attack speed the damage comes with time but we have to go back towards this top side they may have gotten that solo bolo but they are already rushing into that grievous wounds zach will definitely be feeling that one as the game continues on they're also losing that in that cs department the wave is pushed in and it's not like cartus is really known for being able to break a freeze so this game is Although it's looking good from the perspective of gold of uh, Gentle Hearts and the fact that they've got a gold advantage, they've got a kill advantage, they've got that first strike, there's still a lot remaining. This one as Clyde does get knocked back. And Clyde will use the dredge line to bring himself to safety. Now Evan is going to be someone who Gentle Hearts might look to make a play on, but they do see Windcraftian clearing away that ward in the tri brush, and so they'll move off of it for the moment. But Evan thinks he's safe here, pushing up the wave, but he runs into two members of Gentle Hearts, and that will be the dead man with the staff, and he will collect himself his second kill of the game. Blackfire Torch in hand would look to see potentially Cross start to take over this game. Could take over this game. Windcraftian is going to be topside, though. PCL is going to jump away. Windcraftian will follow it up. There is no flash for the Zac. Is there passive available? There is. Ultimate being channeled here from Cross. It's not going to find any kills, but it's going to chip Windcraftian as he does pick up the kill here onto the Zac. Now, Shao Danny has made his way up from the mid lane, but he runs into two people and says, I was just a little bit too late. Couldn't help my pal. And now has to watch that little blob of goo sit there and wait to respawn as he clears the wave in the top lane yeah it does get that wave clear we will see also on the other side of things Cartus has got that blackfire torch already completed but on the other side Cartus or kazix does have that yumu so it's speed versus dot here and we will see that drake also spawning pretty soon let's keep an eye on that second drake and see what fights will come from it as clyde is Clyde going to land that hook but Buffered, as always, as Ezreal is incredible at doing so. Oh, and Hope has fallen here in the bot side. Clyde roamed up through the river, said, I'm going to make a play here in mid. And Hope said, bro, the, brother, you left me, man. I'm here all by myself, and I just got attacked by multiple people. And Hope drops for the third time this game. The Jinx is struggling in the bot side, C32. They're looking real good down there. Yeah, and that, that's one of your win conditions falling further and further behind is that Leandri's has been completed by the brand. 
they're more than comfortable playing around those extra burns now and i think we've all seen a brand in the last while it never stops ticking and gonna get very very tough from that point is the ocean drake also now picked up and yeah the jinx needs a little bit of a dig out now as we will see those grubs being finished up on the other side and a little more presence maybe for the zack in that side lane yeah and you and i Seder, were talking about when we were on the break here loading into game yes gentle hearts have a great team fighting team but you can't always think about how well a team functions in their best scenario. You have to think about their worst scenarios. And that's something you pointed out to me that I'm keeping in my mind right now. The Jinx is constantly left alone and dying in these skirmishes. The Zack is falling behind on the Gwen. So I think if C32 is continuously isolating these fights, they're still going to find advantages despite the strong 5v5 team of Gentle Hearts. And this is something that C32 is using to their advantage thus far. The neutral objective game has been close for the time being, it's three grubs at peace for both of these teams. And it is also two dragons at peace as well. But Freemason's going to run into a dredge line. The depth charge going to come down as well. This pike is knocked up and unable to move. There's the super mega death rocket. It's not going to land. The Requiem was used as well. But Pike just walks it off like a champ. Only half HP taken. Clyde takes half HP for himself. He's sitting at about 40% HP now. The 2v2 doesn't result in any kills. But it's Pryo to see 32. It is prior to C32, and yeah, that that bot lane is going to be a... Uh, Can ooh, they never get mind. the ultimate off? X marks the spot, but it doesn't mark the spot. You dug up the X, and there was no treasure, and Freemason drops, and that will be something here. Unfortunately, though, the kill went to Clyde again. Three kills on the Nautilus. Yeah, Nautilus is going to be a very, very tanky boy in this one. And once those Knight's Vows come true, we might see a little bit more survivability oh. coming true, but... Clyde... He's like, I see this brand, I want him, but he doesn't know about the Kha'Zix sitting in the alcove. He just saw the jungle pet, and pop goes the weasel. There is the bug man, and he will take you out. And that's a shutdown he got just for that freebie on the support. Yeah, big shutdown as well. And that's not a target you want those extra kills going on to. Xiao Danny might be in a little bit of trouble here. Xiao Danny there, Freemason going to jump up, land the bone skewer, does have flash available. They're actually going to use the buster shot to knock in the pike to tower range. He's just going to walk it off once again. Again, Shao Danny is a hard kill here in the mid lane. They, they continue trying and they continue failing. He just holds his ground. Yeah, Shao Danny has been cold and calculated in that mid lane nearly at all times. Very, very comfortable. Knows exactly how to play these scenarios. But we do have to talk a little bit about a couple of other things that are happening because with those Drake trades and the Grub trades and all that coming true, it's going to be fairly even for the time. But with this Rift Herald, they can open up that mid lane and start to move Zhao Dani around. And that could be a difference maker in itself. Zhao Dani on roams and in side lane pressure can open up the map for Gentle Hearts Gaming and give them so much more. But gold totals, mid lane is winning, jungle is winning, top is perfectly even nearly at this stage. And the ADCs are very, very close, but it's so much gold on Clyde. It is a lot of gold on the Nautilus, but you're absolutely right. They do get that Rift Herald that they can open up mid. It will open up the door for Shao Danny to apply pressure onto the map. And Tristan is very good at doing that. Mr. Hope, you are in trouble for the moment. Fright's going to say, hey, man, you're all by yourself. I got you right where I want you. But can Hope go for the outplay? He actually flashes away. Why is the brand taking the tower? This is a huge misplay from C32. Hope looking like the LPL player out there. My goodness, what an outplay. The Jinx will get two kills and Gentle Hearts must have have smiles on their faces right now yeah that chat is just vibes right now as that is exactly what they wanted from their jinx and they didn't even need clyde there the carter still came yeah, down and hope was flashing and barrier dashing moving weaving and ducking and they took everything they needed from that scenario and that's firmly put them in a strong position going into this third drake i think they have everything they need now to get going they do have what they need. They got the gold on the Jinx. Kraken Slayer is complete. Might work towards either an Infinity Edge or a Zeal item next year for Hope. It could be that Rapid Fire Cannon. Could be the PD for Kite. Or it could be Runons to hit more people here as well. We'll see what comes through. But they got close to two items on their Karthus. And 
Once you have a Karthus with two items and you're fighting for that third Drake, you're going to be feeling really, really good. It's close to two items on the Kha'Zix as well. And so the items are still fairly close. The gold is slightly in favor of Gentle Hearts here. Let's see what they can do. The Death Charge going to be dropped here from Clyde, and Brand will be knocked up, although here comes the TP in defense, and that is going to force Cross and Clyde backward. The Bone Skewer actually going to be buffered by the Dredge Line. A nice use of the Nautilus mechanics there from the Gentle Hearts support. Going to run right into Windcraftian, who might be getting a little bit too overzealous, but maybe not. They have the damage to pick off the Nautilus, and we talked about that third Drake Seder. The hopes for Gentle Hearts to acquire it may have just diminished before their eyes with that pick. Yeah, that pick is massive for them, and that will unlock another Drake for them as they get their second on the board. Unless we see some sort of magical steal here, I don't think there's a Super Mega Death Rocket. Jaudani's not going to walk down, and we're not going to see Cross attempt to even go down that side. But that Rift Herald's still sitting in the back pocket, and I feel like they could have used that a lot earlier to try to pick up some pressure, but right now, it looks like it's going to be used in that top side. We can see on the map, Cross has moved up to the top lane, staying out of vision for the moment. Actually going to use the Herald to knock down the top tower, and Shao Danny is here on the flank. They're going to look to try and take out Evan as best as they can. He's actually just going to jump right into melee range. He doesn't give a damn. He's going to space him away with the buster shot, and PCL is going to try and help out his mid laner, Shao Danny, though. Man, just showing us what he can do on this pick and takes out a Gwen like that. ADC versus a Juggernaut champion. They're going to get that second charge there from the Herald. They're going to get a whole lot from this. Can they get the second tower? I don't think they can. Might be overstaying their welcome if they do that. But pick and the tower here for Gentle Hearts. And they got mid push as well. They're going to get mid tower too. The macro Seder. We talked about this. It's insane. The macro was good. The macro was strong. Hope and Clyde are even stronger, they feel. Oh, right now, as they're going all in. Oh, flash. flash. Good work, though. A lot of great work done there. Two Rift Herald procs, towers, kills. I am keeping an eye right now on Xiao Dani. They're now down towards that bot side. That tower needs to be unlocked for them to get full strength nearly on the map. And they're getting closer. They're certainly getting closer. And they're sending Shao Danny down there to take care of that. Going to push out the wave and then just relax Leave. and make sure he's not getting picked off here. We see the setup from the map. They actually have PCL here in the Bot River looking for maybe a fight or looks like a fight is actually broken out. It's Freemason once again. Remember, no flash depth charge will come down, although that pike is very slippery and will get away. The Requiem used as well. So big cooldowns from Gentle Hearts being committed for this play. Dredge line just going to miss. The Cossacks, but hold on a second. Clyde gonna blast Cohen right into the action. You got no team with you here, man, but now you do because here flies in the Zack and Freemason now in no man's land. Gonna try and use the X marks the spot to bring himself to safety, but it's not going to work out. One for zero in favor of Gentle Hearts for the moment into the passive goes PCL Evan trying to do the damage he can do to finish off that kill, but it's going to be a two for one now and he will drop Shout Danny dodge away from the Mystic Shots in tenfold using the E to escape and now Fright's been locked up by the CC, but when Craftian on the back line is assassinated the Jinx and they've gone too far it's a triple kill for Tenfold and Gentle Hearts they overstayed their welcome and they got punished what in what looked like a good play it looked like a good play it started so well but that Ezreal damage just that Essence Reaver nearly completed man I mean not even there yet and just constantly landing abilities and just shattered the team fight there from just a, what looked like a winning position and they now have to regroup, rethink, and go, we can't go so heavy, try and take out carries when Kha'Zix can just delete our backlines. That isolation damage is insane. But we have to remember, the longer this game goes, the scarier that Cart Assault will get. And it's just going to keep getting worse and worse as PCL. They're that is a play. Right. He's saying, hey, man, I see that HP bar. You're looking mighty fine over there. You need to get over here for me. But Fright's able to buy himself enough space to get out of this one. But what does Gentle Hearts want to do? Hey, they want to do that Baron because this is a really awkward reset timing for Seed32. They want to get out of here. They want to shop. They want to get some gold. Their ADC is way on the other side of the map. The TP is going to come through. And Evan is going to be tanking up five people right now. The, the, the Mist is going to do its very best to keep him alive. But it's not going to be enough in the end. Here's Gentle Hearts' chance to redeem themselves. When Crafting is going to be able to finish off PCL before his last breath goes. And now the Requiem being dropped a tenfold season. And says, okay, thank you very much. But Chow Danny wants to avenge his friend tenfold's gonna flash over the wall the damage here the range from the jinx the last auto attack's going to come through a triple kill for hope and now it's only up to fright here to try and help out the team and stop gentle hearts from taking this baron but he simply can't do it and that will be the play out of nowhere what an exchange 
What an exchange. Everything they could have wanted out of that one. More importantly, a lot of kills going over. Bounties being picked up. And look, hope is the hope right now. They have to play around this Jinx from this point on. And they do finally take out Cross. Uh, I can't remember if he had a Dark Seal or not building up there. But look at the goal differences coming now through for that jungle and that ADC roll. It's everything Gentle Hearts need right now. And C32... They, they need to maybe readjust some of their thoughts here on how the Kha'Zix can get in, because that looked shaky. That looked shaky. It looked uncoordinated, and Gentle Hearts looked more comfortable in that scenario there around the Baron. And also, like you said, the Karthus is getting very far ahead here, very close to that death cap. When you see two needlessly large rods in someone's inventory, you know exactly what item they are going for, and that they are very soon going to hit a massive power spike, and that is what Cross is playing for at the moment. If Gentle Hearts can fight when he gets that, it will be huge, but it won't be huge if he gets hit by a pike and dies immediately, but the fight is going to break off. Can the Karthus do enough inside of the passive to help out the squad? It looks like that's going to be a yes. Hope gets the resets, but he's getting absolutely destroyed by this Ezra it's back and forth it was c32 then it's gentle hearts now it's c32 with this fight again what is going on in this game but they will get their prize in the chemtech drake it's just cooldowns they're just not tracking cooldowns correctly here they're just mistiming a couple of ults and they're just getting caught in weird positions and you do always have to worry when you're going up against champions that have such impactful ults and they didn't get to get jinx's rocket off Cross wasn't able to use the card to sold, so they had two major burst abilities and not available to them, and they just weren't respecting that at the time, and it's come back to hurt them almost immediately, and they got to get these timings down. They need to patch up their gameplay here. They got to know when the right time is to fight because if they give their opponents too many more of these uh, unfavorable team fights, then they're not going to have... A game to play anymore because their nexus is going to explode we started to see this towards the end of their second game last night so we'll see how gentle hearts can keep their composure and adapt later on in this game to see if they can fix their mistakes that they've made on the fly the moment or the game plan for them right now push out these side waves they got their adc in the mid lane getting that mid prior they're also ushering this jinx safely through that mid lane too making sure if anyone jumps onto her then the rest of the squad is there to help out they're looking like evan could be their next target here around the bot side that tier one is surprisingly still standing strong but not for long the tristana is going to chop it down there's no cross map play available here for seed 32 and the push will continue again no baron buff available because they just all died in that previous fight but they're going to continue the siege there's simply not enough people here from seed 32 to contest this the pike is on the other end of the map getting vision for i don't know what there's literally nothing over there for them to want vision for and they lose the tier two yes yeah, very very strange ideas there in terms of where they wanted to be on the map. Um, C32 just kind of messed up there and what the plan was from um, Gentle Hearts. They, uh, it's one of those situations that you hear a lot more of in the likes of FPSs where you attempt a hard read. You try to read exactly what they're going to do next and they just seem to get lost a little bit in their own idea of this is what they should do. And Gentle Hearts were like, no, no, we're going to do this bit by bit as we have seen them do previously they like to take down towers one after another and start to move as a unit but right now pcl you have to be careful tp is available for jow danny though so with the passive they could definitely be picked up and saved from that one but it will be very defensive play for pcl knowing we don't see anyone something could be happening yeah, you want to play your life here. You need to be there for the team if something breaks out, especially if it's onto one of those key targets like Hope. You need to be there to protect your carry. Hope and Shao Danny are the two people to focus on here for Gentle Hearts. If one of them's alive and able to free hit in these fights, it's going to be good news for them. If they have no one around them to protect them, then it's going to be bad news. And so a bit of a tense moment here in the mid game. There's no objective on the map right now. It's really just back and forth, acquiring vision in the key locations like the jungle, like the river, sweeping it out when the other team backs away and goes for resets. You're constantly pushing in these waves, but for the moment, it's Gentle Hearts with the upper hand right now. They're able to push further and closer to the other team's base. They do have that wave to fix in the bot lane. They're going to send Shao Danny down there to collect it. 
and they're focusing on these tier twos they want to be able to grab that standing gold that is there for them and can be used to get a few extra items maybe complete some fourth items here for the jinx the bloodthirster almost on the way here for the tristana as well and it's really just building around these next neutral objectives and who can be better prepared for them in in the next coming minutes who can be prepared for it has to be the baron right like that soul is available for c32 they have that soul point and they're very very close to getting it and chemtech is quite strong um especially when you're below 50 percent hp and brand if he does get chunked out early but still gets that ult off as he steps back he, he'll be perfectly fine they have to keep an eye on this kazix at this point i do like the build that kazix go for it is my preferred it's not the one you'll see on the likes of u.gg or blitz if you use any of those most people go you moves into the likes of opportunity but i do prefer the profane hydra build you get that slightly faster clear that buys you a little bit of time to uh get those, those lanes a little bit faster and just be on the map a little bit more as clive once again gets taken by the hook from the pike and I guess at this point, the question has to be asked of what are they looking for in Engage to, for it to be perfect here for Gentle Hearts and how do they protect themselves in this situation, Gentle Hearts? Well, they need to make sure that they have an opportunity to go for either a fight or the Baron without having any repercussions on the other side of the fight. But here's Shao Danny, who has been flanked. The Buster Shot's going to knock away when crafting, who does have the Depth Charge here onto him to flash forward. They've locked down the Kha'Zix, and they've gotten him that kill. And Evan, what are you doing in the middle of four people? He goes, and he blows up like an atomic bomb. And that's going to be a five for three so far in favor of Gentle Hearts. This is exactly what they were looking for, Sater. You said it, and they found it. They have a five versus three. We've seen this situation before, though. They got two critical picks, and they weren't able to get there or push it over the goal line there they do have low hp bars they don't have the right cooldowns do they even have what it takes to take this dragon away from c32 but now it's been started saying oh wait we gotta stop them from getting the soul you have to fight this no matter what but here comes the 3v5 fight chow danny fortunately able to survive but the jungler is down it's not gonna come down to a smite fight it's gonna come down to what he could do he's trying to block for it but it's actually gonna be tenfold to grab the chemtech drake he gets the soul for his team and he's actually just gonna kill everyone what is going on tenfold is so insane in this game this Ezreal looking like Honklu or Dragdar here. Insane stuff from their mid laner. Zoom in as far as you can on that Ezreal. What a play. Yeah, that Ezreal playing at the absolute edge of his limits, just taking out pick by pick by pick. And Xiao Dani stuck in between a cart assault and the rest of the team, or a cart of cart is passive. So they weren't able to get into that one. And Jinx just not strong enough yet to take that one down. And they do lose that one. And it is unfortunate. But tenfold, all power to them. They are taking over this game. And right now, Baron being taken, Soul now taken, and Gentle Hearts there in a very tough spot. Here comes the teleport PCL trying to guess where Tenfold is. He doesn't get that right. Gonna use the stun onto the minion. The Requiem as well is going to come down. Does PCL have the damage to finish off this Ezra before he can kite away from him? The minions are doing a lot of damage as well because C32 had just acquired themselves that Baron. And Tenfold gonna escape with that 600 gold bounty on his head. Gentle Hearts cannot acquire it, and he'll get away with the Baron Empowered Recall. In that fight... Hope stood in front of the Chemtech Drake, hoping that he would block the Mystic Shots, which would potentially execute the Baron. I think, or sorry, the Chemtech Dragon, but I think that was the wrong play. I think you just play for the fight. If they get the Drake, okay, fine. That, that It is what it is. Your jungler died. It's okay. Then you can win the fight and get Baron. But the compromise of positioning there from Hope, he stood right in front of that Ezreal, let him unload all his spells onto his face, and then just destroyed him right there and then and allowed the Ezreal to pick up all those kills. I feel like even if you lost the Drake, if as long as you won the fight, you could go Baron and you'd still be in a good spot. The counter Drake, not, yeah, not really the most powerful of souls. You more think about the Hex Tech, the Infernal, and the Mountain. But again, it's just an incredible play from Tenfold regardless and some small mistakes there from Gentle Hearts. But we'll see how the rest of this game plays out now with Gentle Hearts being on the back foot from what looked like a really good position for them. Really good position and just unfortunate situations and it just rips them apart at the worst of times. But right now they're on that defense. This game is not over. They still have that jinx. They still have that scaling. They still have everything they could possibly need to survive this one. It's a little bit more time and a bit better target selection and they're back in this. Certainly. And the siege continues on to the bot tier two. Again, with that Baron buff, C32 feels very confident as a team to push back Gentle Hearts and try and take these towers and this gold. 
out from under them, even when they're here looking like they can defend this. There's just so much damage on this team composition that if you step one foot out of line, you are going to get fried. Even though Hope's still playing very confident in his positioning, standing in front with no one here to protect him. Clyde is trying to play the best front line he possibly can using the dredge line to counter the bone skewer there. But we do see a fight here breaking out in the mainland. It's Chow Danny and PCL trying to make the play under tenfold. There's the Requiem that's going to find the kill, but it's a two for one in favor of Seed32. Now, what do they get from this? And can they get anything from this, really? Or is is it just two kills, a two for one that's just going to result in gold in the pocket to the respective parties? Depends on if Evan will be able to get something off of this one. They do have a cannon minion available, so to be able to get some damage on the tower from the range, but it still looks like it is going to be a, a slowdown here with the Baron. Cross should be able to stop this one. Hope is oh, getting chunked, oh though. That's the flash burn. Has to burn flash and barrier. Although Fright does have to burn a flash of his own because that depth charge was right about to knock him up, potentially seal his fate here. We do see a, a screen going black here. We can't quite see what's going on. Now we're back here. Okay, there's no fight happening just yet, but the siege is very effective here on the side of Seed32. So close to dying is when crafting that super mega death rocket almost took him out and Clyde is on the chase and potentially Gentle Hearts want to look for a TP play now that Xiao Danny is alive to look for this and Clyde continues to jump forward but you have to be careful man. You don't do any damage as this Nautilus and Dej just gonna die. That's gonna be it. That is going to be the play that he went for and Gentle Hearts he did actually buy some time, though. Maybe this was the play when Craftian's going to drop to the dot damage of the Blackfire Torch and the Leandries. And Fright used the Zonny's Hourglass to make sure that that damage did not come through, which would have put him in lethal range. We do see Xiao Danny, though. You have to be careful. Rocket Jump is going to move away from the rest of the C32 team and bring him to safety. I mean, the whole base, though, all of the inhibitor towers gone for Gentle Hearts. Yeah, it's it's a tough one from this position, but we saw this yesterday in their game too. They had taken all of the outer towers. They were on to the final X towers and one team fight changed it all. And that's what League is all about now. It's that one team fight difference. And if they can build up enough from that. So one good team fight, they can end it all, but they cannot let any split pushing. They can't let Evan get into the sides. We do see oh. the channel there from Joe Danny. He will buffer it in the end, but he does get his back cancelled. Gets his back cancelled. Not sure. Well, actually, it's going to be an Elder Drake spawning soon. So the back timers are important. However, I do believe Shao Danny and Cross will have enough time to get in the immediate area of that Elder Dragon in time before it does spawn. But this is going to be the neutral objective that ends the game. Certainly, there's almost no way, no way that I can imagine a fight going down and someone taking this Elder without it being the end of the game here. They're going to get locked into a fight. It's all going to come down to this. Gentle Hearts and C32. Both of these teams in the online qualifier are 1-1, one and one, hoping to improve to 2-1 and one and go up to that portion of the bracket who is going to be able to earn themselves that victory we're going to find out here as Clyde has been hooked in and he is tanking up for the rest of the team for the moment Evan is tanking up in the front line but that's going to be a one for one but look at the damage that Ezreal is free hitting here it looks like this is all C32 they have too much damage for gentle hearts to withhold and tenfold will be going off once again the teleport now into the bot lane looking to end this game Looking to end it right here, right now. Clyde went in, thought they got the right pick there, but no, Evan did not fall fast enough. They ended up one for oneing it. Cross had fallen. The ult was burned. Everything was used, but Xiao Danny jumps in, immediately gets stunned, and Tenfold manages to just free fire and clean that one up. And not even needing the Elder for this one. They're just going to take this inhib, walk those minions in. And it's it's an unfortunate one for them, but we have to give a lot of credit over to that ready? Ezreal as they were <laughs> terrifying. Camera ready? Yeah, both of these teams showing why they are two of uh, two very strong teams in this tournament. It's just Seed32 that was able to clutch it Camera's up fired. in the end here. So close for Gentle Hearts once again, similar to the way that they were so close in game two of last night. And they will fall down to one and two, and they will see who their opponent is in the next stage of the tournament. But again, those scrappy fights, and there was so much damage available there for Seed32. They had the Kha'Zix on the back line. They had the Gwen with the Hallowed Mist, able to dodge away from Jinx and Tristana damage and wreak havoc for those tankier champions like the Nautilus and the Zac. And Ezreal free firing from the backside. Brand throwing the fire in and setting everything ablaze. There was just too much for Gentle Hearts to handle. Yeah, it's one of those things we talk about 
comps quite a lot and correct drafting and all of these things but sometimes if you're just good enough on your champion sometimes it doesn't matter and that's something tenfold really showed this time they could play a brand bot they could put the ezreal mid and it just took over and jedani even on what i would now call his signature pick at least in my eyes wasn't enough this time around and what could they have done better i i think just not getting caught in these weird chokes are around the likes of the drake um, they've maybe just overloaded a little bit too much and going a little bit too aggressive when they have a little bit of time to find the perfect engage. And it's it's an unfortunate one, but that's how League of Legends goes sometimes. Have to see how they pick themselves back up in the next two games. Going to have to see how they keep their composure again. You're right, Sater. They have two games left to go today. Ready. And so they will have to keep their heads high. You can't hang on this loss too hard. And you have to keep your mentality forward for your next games. And we'll see how well they do after we head to a quick break. We will be back for game number two of the day and see if Gentle Hearts can bounce back. So don't go anywhere. More League of Legends action coming your way after this short break. Emma's out. Microphone's out. Good job, guys. Was that a troll or was that just tenfold diff? Uh, kind of both, I yeah, feel. both, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I, I think, like I said it on the broadcast, but the way that Hope was like just hyper-focusing on not letting him getting the the chemtech soul like he just threw his life away completely and it didn't even get the job done in the end he was just like full melee range on him i think you just you just try and steal it from him from range you don't try and block and then maybe you win the fight afterwards once you get the res like the, the the passive reset and then maybe you get baron you can still win despite them having chemtech but yeah i don't know i think a little bit of both is the right answer Clyde not stepping in to stop it was probably worse true Clyde should have been in front of the Jinx. I think there was a little bit of a gap between the two ADCs, to be honest with you. Like, I feel like that Ezreal, or I guess ADC in mid, but Marksman, whatever. Ezreal playing on the edge of his limits versus a Jinx that's... I felt like not playing defensively, but also, as much as this is a competitive game, you do have to limit test a little bit. And I felt like at no point did she make any decision that wasn't a 50-50 or like she was, was only no, taking 8% plays. There was but... no high percentage play in terms of, I know I can win this. Mm. Yeah. It always felt like a, we need to win this, not we can. Yeah. But, eh. It's stressful. Can't lie. I'm not going to sit here and say that I've never stressed out the game, so... Yeah, no, like it's it's a it's a tough one to call, and the main thing is making sure that the players are still happy is the best way to put it. Like you can't let this get them down, or it'll it'll ruin them for the rest of it. Yeah, actually, that's very true. Okay, uh, do make sure you've got water. Blah blah blah. blah. Yeah, I need I'm gonna to go that. ahead and uh, grab some for myself. I'll be right back. Looks like all the one one. And the O2 games are finished. Oh, everyone's done. Okay, cool. Should wait for that to update now then. Hi. Yeah. Long day. I have no idea why the FPS was sitting at like 40 to 50. That's just OBS and League, to be honest. Imagine having a spectator client that was uh decent <laughs> especially yeah, after releasing a 500 dollars skin you know maybe with all that extra money they'll hire developers to remake the client so it's no longer spaghetti no nah, riot trindamir needs another yacht oh that's so real this yacht needs like an extra yacht underneath he needs it. another yacht so he can put his yacht inside the yacht mm, and that's all gets in. yeah he's on his jeff bezos run right now it's fucking crazy, like. Oh my god, I am watching them manually fill out these boxes. That is crazy. I love that. I am so here for that, actually. Can you send me the link for that? Yeah, yeah. I want to see how Dardoch's team is doing. I'll stick it in. Uh, some stage. Yeah. Sorry for my in right now. I'm in the context one. I'm actually a massive favorite against Zen. 
What is the and we're left side twice, you might probably take left again. <laughs> 